And God said, let there be light. A reading from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The Word of the Lord. <laughs> Give light to my eyes, lest I sleep in death. A reading from the book of Psalms, Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice, because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, because he has dealt bountifully with me. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. 
I form light and create darkness. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 45, verses 2 to 8. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make wheel and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the skies rain down righteousness. Let the earth open that salvation may spring up, and let it cause righteousness to sprout up also. I, the Lord, have created it. The Word of the Lord.
Look to the East. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2, 3, 6, and 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Dunkery Beacon is one of the most dramatic places on Exmoor. Of course, it's also the highest point on Exmoor, and we are very fortunate to have it in our deanery. It's dramatic in its weather, and it's also dramatic during the day and during the night. During the daytime, you can have marvellous views when it's clear, views across the Bristol Channel to Wales, views along the Somerset coast, past Hinkley Point towards Bristol, views across towards the hills of Devon and Dartmoor. At night time too it's quite spectacular. Stargazers come on good starry nights up to the top of Dunkery Beacon just to sit and gaze and wonder. Meteorites make their way across the skies. Stars shoot from one side to another and they glisten and glitter, the stars glisten and glitter, in such a way that as though you feel you can almost touch them, and the Milky Way is particularly milky from the top of Dunkery Beacon. It's also been a special place for us as a family. We actually saw the new Millennium Inn from the top of Dunkery Beacon. I remember very well making our way up the Dunkery Beacon pathway, in the dark, stumbling along in order to get to the top. And when we did reach the top, waiting for the millennium, we felt all alone in the darkness. It was something quite, quite spectacular and mysterious, having all this beautiful countryside and this lovely sky all to ourselves. And so we waited and we waited. And at a time when we were thinking of our friends and family back home, listening to the chimes of Big Ben, suddenly we heard the sound of champagne corks popping. And we looked around and our eyes were becoming accustomed to the dark and we saw that we weren't on our own, that there was a great crowd of witnesses there to witness the coming of the new millennium. And as our eyes became even more accustomed, we found that actually the place was quite crowded. Advent is all about waiting in the darkness, waiting to celebrate the light that has come and the light that is to come. And that light, of course, is Jesus Christ. The light has come because Jesus was born on Christmas Day over 2,000 years ago, and we're looking forward to celebrating that in a few weeks' time. But also the light, Jesus Christ, is to come again in different places, in different ways, and we need to be ready for that. Advent is waiting in the darkness for that. Waiting and darkness. Let's just think about those two themes. First of all, waiting. Now, when we're waiting, we're not waiting like as though we're waiting for a bus in one of our Exmoor villages in which we, we can never be sure if anything's going to turn up at all. But we're waiting for Advent with an intention in our hearts. We are waiting intentionally, knowing that the one that we are waiting for has come and will come again. So it's not a, a meaningless waiting for something to happen that we don't expect, but we know 
what is going to happen because we're waiting for Jesus to come again as he has come in the past. And this is part of our relationship with God as Christians. We both know that God is with us. He has already come to us and we've already, we're already in relation with God. But that relationship is fulfilled when we continue to look for God. So it's always the contradiction. We are both in relation to God, but we constantly need to search for God. Something that's very much at the heart of the Christian faith and is emphasised at this time of Advent. So at Advent, we look at the time to celebrate his first coming at Christmas and also to be prepared for his future coming. Let's think about the darkness. When we sit in darkness, as we discovered at the top of Dunkery Beacon, our eyes grow accustomed and we can then see differently. And at the top of Dunkery, it takes about 20 minutes before stargazers say that they can see the stars properly because they've got to get their eyes accustomed. They have to learn to see differently. We are all surrounded at this time by much darkness, darkness within our world, darkness as we struggle with Covid, although there are some glimpses of light that we can see around that, and maybe personal darkness that surrounds some of us as well. And in Advent, what we learn is that we need to look at that darkness, look with our hearts as well as our eyes, and we need to learn to see differently. And when we see differently, we discover that we are not alone. There are glimpses of light in places we wouldn't expect to find them. God, we know, is always close. In fact, God is often closer to us than we are to ourselves. But we have to sit quietly, wait and look to discover exactly where and how God is calling us. So over these weeks, we look forward to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, light of the world, at Christmas. That was the light that darkness could not extinguish, could not overcome. And so too, we train ourselves to look with refocused eyes and hearts and to welcome afresh that light that comes again of Jesus Christ coming again to us. And we'll see it in people and in places and in situations where we had not seen it before. But we cannot see it unless we wait, unless we stop and we sit in the darkness. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Amen.
<laughs> the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. A reading from St Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11, 23 and 24. Now concerning the times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labour pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in the darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The Word of the Lord. You are not in darkness, for you are all children of light. A reading from the Gospel according to St Luke, chapter 12, verses 35 to 40. Be dressed for action, and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
O come, O come, <clears throat> Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. O God, our Father, we walk within the dark until the light of your love draws us in. Every Advent, we re-experience the excitement of that dawning. Our hearts are warmed by the promise of forgiveness, joy and hope brought by your Son, born as a tiny child. May your Spirit unite your Church as believers worldwide anticipate the glory that is to come. We pray for priests and people, seekers and sufferers, and those who do not yet know the friendship of the Lord Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O come, the rod of Jesse, free thine own from tyranny. Dear Lord, we pray for your Son's light to lighten all dark places. We give thanks for our gracious Queen. Guide her and all who serve under her. Enlighten the minds of all who lead, that their choices may bring justice for the oppressed, peace where there is war, a fair sharing of the earth's bounty, and wise counsel in the matter of climate change. In our dealings with one another, help us to look past the externals of race, gender, ethnicity, skin colour, and listen to the music of the soul. We pray for a Brexit agreement fair to all. Heal, we pray, at least in part, the deep divisions in the United States. And we ask that Syria may see an end to war and a government that cares for all its people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O come, thou day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here. O God, we thank you for all that is safe and lovely in West Somerset. Help us to be neither too cautious nor too incautious, but to be bearers of your hope and strength for all the hard work of rebuilding when this pandemic is finally over. We pray for families separated from one another, for those where stress leads to violence, for everyone feeling lonely and afraid. We lift to you the plight of those with little money and little food. We pray for relief for so many who have lost jobs and businesses, who feel let down and forgotten. We pray that government schemes, local councils, agencies, charities, everyone trying to help, may together be able to offer everyone some help and sustain us all in hope of better days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O come, thou key of David, come and open wide your heavenly home. O loving Father, your arms are always open wide for us. Your son, that baby in Bethlehem, grew up into a man who wept for others, who touched, who healed. Comfort, we pray, all who today are in pain of body, mind or soul. Be with all those who are exhausted, public service workers, NHS workers, home carers and many more. May they cast their burdens on you and find rest. We pray for all who wait for non-COVID treatment and for those who depend for their well-being on services that are curtailed or cut. May there be resources for those in need. Thank you for the hopeful progress with vaccines. May they be safe and useful. Thank you that those promise of enough cheaply for poorer nations for no one is safe until all are safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Dear Lord, many have died too soon, their lives and loves and talents cut short. We pray for them and those who mourn. May we welcome the coming of that eternal and unshadowed day in which we shall see thy face and know the truth at last. 
Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God himself, the God of peace, make you perfect and holy and keep you safe and blameless in spirit, soul and body for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. As we await our coming Saviour, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>